very special guest, Vicky. Great memory. I, um, three, hang on. Three, I, three, three, 300 games, a player, and you can't run through a banner made by five-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, I'd actually, I'd actually been in bed sick for three days, no. and, and before, and um, the principal rang me up and said, you're coming? I said, no, I can't. I'm sick. I said, you've got to come in. The kids <laughs> have made a banner for you. So I actually dragged myself out of bed, and I literally couldn't run through that banner. <laughs> did, it, did it take you those three days to write that song about yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'd been building up for a month. Don't worry, a little bit. A little bit, did, a little bit how bit. did Burn a School... You were a school teacher for a long time. How yeah, did that... No longer, no longer so I'm oh, That's right, my business. Right, but, that okay. <laughs> no, but I, it, was, it was really interesting back then because you had a job and then you had to, you know, yep. tra train three nights a week, play on Saturday. And it was really good, especially with kids, because if you had a terrible day on Saturday, you'd get about five minutes of ribbing from the kids, then they'd forget about <laughs> yeah, it. Of course, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it actually was a really nice balance. Be you, pretty grand. If you had a yeah. terrible day with the kids, you'd go and run it out the footy field. So it was actually a nice balance. Were you teaching in the Essendon area? Uh, no, I was out in the uh, east, uh, western suburbs, sorry. I was yeah. going to say eastern, just for people who... Go what? No. <laughs> western <laughs> suburbs. <laughs> Our audience who yeah. wouldn't know where the western suburbs are. <laughs> hey, so you start, you start your illustrious career in 74. Uh, yeah, uh, last, last year, black and white TV. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Yeah, he's going Don't back. bring that up. That good in the era when you were wearing those stupid red shorts. Oh. Is that, <laughs> and remember, your blokes had the yellow That's ones. right. I remember. And that was a terrible era for us. I think we never won anything while we were wearing the yellow shorts. And I think your red shorts were, were not the very same. good. One of the great things Sheeds did, apart from lots of other things, he got rid of the red shorts it's as true. soon as he could. Yeah. Well, they were yeah, gone. Ten, ten years later, they were gone. By the time you, you've sort of developed into a super team, 84, 85, go back to back. The 84 year was phenomenal. The last quarter is the stuff of legend. It's easy to ask you about how great it was to be part it's a great of this, team. and that's self-evident. But he's so dominant in '85, Simon. How many do you, more do you reckon this group had in it? Oh, look, it's always a great question. They're very hard to get. We were lucky enough to have three premierships in a row. Um, I, I think this was before was, the game. I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's, early. that's the warm up. That's the warm up. Um, it is really, really hard to get one. And we got two. And then uh, I think Anthony Denneher broke. I uh, did a knee. Uh, Tony Atris, our our main um, recruit, right, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. broke an ankle. Tim Watson did an ankle. All of a sudden, you, you haven't got the team because yeah. we only had four changes yeah. in two years. You haven't got the team, and it gets a lot harder. Well, yeah. Can we talk about '84? Um, you went out there, and this wasn't like you. Simon, you went out there and started throwing a few punches. What happened? Oh, no, you threw punches, punches slash handbags oh. here, but um, <laughs> what? what is and, and you can tell the, the other guy isn't punching back because he's laughing. <laughs> this, this is not like you. Can I? What, did what you get any feedback with the coaching staff? Um, look, look, I've got two things. Um, I just, I just wasn't getting a kick, so yes. I said I've got to do something. Mm. And well, I did that the, was a stat in those days. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, but I always remember after the game, in all, in, in all the celebration, Nick, Nick Nufito, a Rucks coach, all, in all the celebration, he looked at me and he went... <laughs> <laughs> so I knew I'd probably, I'd probably... I actually was reported and got off. Were you yeah, told to... Was there an instruction for you well, at I that stage to go out and get physical? I can't remember. People have said that Sheed said that I should go and hit somebody. But Sheed's never said that. Sheed's never said hit somebody. He would say, you know what I would have done? Yeah. In my time, I would have done this. <laughs> and you sort of got the message. Oh, yeah. So he'd never actually told you what he, to go and punch but, but the rest of the game, and you spoke about that before, you spent a majority of the game on the bench. And a lot of people were asking, is Madden injured? Um, I was being saved for the last quarter. Well, <laughs> now, well, Stephen Phillips, who worked for Channel 7, uh, everyone was asking, you know, what injury does Madden have? But he gave us the correct facts. And on the Essendon bench, Simon Madden, who was freely tipped by many to win the Brownlow medal as the best in the competition, has been sitting on the bench for most of the quarter. And I went over to find out if there was anything wrong with him, and they just said, no, he's playing very poorly indeed. <laughs> It was good of them oh. to sugarcoat it. Though. Yeah, exactly. I, wish that, I wish that was the era of fake news. <laughs> so, no, but, well, being the champion you are, you, you weren't deterred by that. 85 was arguably the greatest year you put together, and you had some beauties, and you come oh. back and you're an unbelievably dominant Amazing. team. Amazing. And you play just one of the great grand finals, win the Norm Smith. You won a Norm Smith medal, mate. Did, how, much, how much did you want to bury 84? I don't know, great from a team perspective, for, for your own personal... Look this. Oh, look, I, I think look, it's a whole team effort, but we really knew we were the best side in 85. In 84, you thought you, you, you had a chance. Yeah. And, and we could never beat Hawthorne, we finally get there. In 85, we knew we were the best side, yeah. and we wanted to prove it and show we were. 
and we went out and we were. And such was the nature of footy back in those days that Dr. Jeffrey Edelston's owning the Sydney Footy Club and yes. he's got he's a done your research. He's, he's, he's got a checkbook and he came after you. I remember he came after you. How persuasive? What sort of what money? What was the offer? Yeah. I, look, but honestly, there were two offers. The first offer, and think about this, we negotiation with Jeff, Peter Jess was the manager. I met him and he said, da 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 and he said, Jesse said, don't worry, you know, this money, and he said, no, I want him. And Jesse said, how much? And he said, think, uh, end of 85, $100,000 up front, cash to sign, and four fifty thousand over three years. So 550000 which would have, would have been the highest paid player in the game, would have, oh. would have been equivalent now to, say, extrapolate to 800000 up front cash and, uh, uh, and $1.2 million a year for which three years. Which is what Andy's on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 uh, were you close? Did you, that's amazing money. Did so. he have a haymaker offer? Did he well, have no, well, he, well, in the end, I said there's a few... This is a serious... Like, there's a few problems. I, I said there's a few issues. He said... What issues? I said, look, I've just got a new house, I've just got a new family, and I've just got a new job. And he said, what do you... And he disagrees with that, but there's two yeah, other people yeah. in the room. Uh, he, said, uh, he said, what do you do for a job? I said, I'm a teacher. He said, I'll get your job. I'll get your job. I'll buy your school. <laughs> Dead set, the honesty set. And, I'm sort of, and all of a sudden I'm saying, now this is starting to get interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you, so you, you didn't don't want to work. So <laughs> but the rest of people go, well, you'll, you'll never have to work again. Now I'm going to buy you a school and make you work. <laughs> I'm going to go there every day. Every, the legend of Simon Madden and every essence of points. Jeffrey Elston High. Delighted that you knocked, you knocked it back. You become a giant of the footy club, one of the greats of the game. Um, you are, of course, part of a famous set of brothers. And we love it in footy when brothers play against one another and go a bit toe to toe. And we saw it on the weekend up in Darwin, Andy and Good. Angus Brayshaw, mm. uh, Angus at Melbourne, Andrew at Fremantle, had a little bit of a dust up. Well, what was it like how, when you were playing yeah. on, your, on your brother? You, you can understand what's going oh, on there. It's just, you, you, it's just like the, you know, kicking the foot in the backyard every now and then you disagree, you have a bit of a Biffo and you move on, there's yeah. no problems at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like being in the backyard. There's about 30,000 people at the ground and there's eight cameras and there you are with your younger brother. Did you like playing footy against him, Simon? Well, um, you knew you weren't going to get hit in the back of the head because it was almost, you know, we're going to play each other and beat each other fair and square yeah. where you, you never knew with anybody else. But, you know, f don't forget he was six for ten. I reckon at his heaviest about 125 kilos. Yeah, he's massive. Yeah. So he's just, he's, you know, legs like tree trunks and he, he wouldn't, you know, wouldn't have the ball there. He'd hold you out like hey, this. Hey, 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 <laughs> I went to protect my beard, did you notice? <laughs> well, that's your side of the story. Why don't we hear Justin's side of the oh, story and what go. it was like playing on his brother? Here we go. Brother Justin, now at Carlton, loves playing against his older brother for one particular reason. It's good fun because uh, it's probably one of the only games of the year you know where you're not going to get a backhander from some bloke. And it's you play by the rules. There's a sort of unspoken law that you play by the, by the book. Yeah, so you play by the rules, you play by the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, uh, I don't know what the book was. I think it must have been Fifty Shades of Grey. Have a, <laughs> have a look at this bit of footage and what the... <laughs> The old, well, well, he what book is that by? Yeah, yeah but he, he started that. <laughs> he got no, he, he started did. it and you got the free kick. Yeah, did no, you get the free, free kick for holding the ball? Exactly right. <laughs> 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 Hey, what, how did he start that with a bit of four plus? He started it. No, he said. <laughs> he said no, he said something about my mother. Really upset. <laughs> right. We're going to just have a bit of a think about that. You're going to stick around. You're not going anywhere. There's more to talk to you about. Simon Man's going to stay where he is. When we come back, one of the great cult figures of the '90s from the Adelaide Footy oh, Club, Wayne Wiedemann.